Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Keith Andrews. Let me shut my door. Hang on. It is Monday, November 18th. It is one week before Thanksgiving weekend. So the first thing I'm going to do on the front part of this recording, because I forget to sometimes, do not come back here next Monday to watch this live because it won't happen. I'm actually going to take vacation Monday to Thanksgiving Day instead of being in the Thanksgiving Day to weekend. So I'm going to go ride on a train. I'm going to go somewhere, and I won't be wanting to do this from the train while on my phone. That doesn't work for me. So do not come back next week for this. Following week, we'll do it again. We'll pick it right back up, whatever that date is. is that December 1st? I think that's December 1st. So we'll pick it up on December 1st. So next week, you guys have fun with Thanksgiving, family, everything. Okay? Don't worry about coming here. Which means the people here today need to like bring up whatever you need us to discuss because we're going to be putting it off for two weeks if you don't. Okay. So uh, first of all, for those who don't know, I'm Keith Andrews. I'm sitting in Birmingham, Alabama area in the metro area. And I like to do this weekly uh, if it's not a holiday weekend or, you know, something like that. And what we do is we get together. This is open to anybody in commercial or anybody who wants to be in commercial. We don't care what company you're with, bring your guests, whatever. And we want to talk about things. Well, we got some big topic or big discussions about what happened last week in Atlanta, okay? And for those who don't know that, we celebrated four years of EXP commercial. We started the EXP commercial. Uh, the official date was November 1st per Lindy McNeese. However, the first licensee was myself. That was November 6th. And then we started to turn on a lot of states over the next few months after that, back in 2020. Okay, so it's November 2020. Four years happened this month, this year. There'll be a bigger celebration of five years because that seems to be a significant number. So be prepared for that. You'll see stuff during the course of next year about that. We went to Atlanta. We had a celebration. We also incorporated the uh, in real life meetings that I like to try to do in this part of the country where we could come together. And now the new term is 4D, not 3D. Who was that Blair that said 4D? Was that you that said 4D over Saturday? Do you remember that, Blair? That was you, I think, wasn't it? No. Yeah, I think it was. Okay. We met in 4D, Paul, not in 3D. 3D is physically, but 4D is our minds, our emotions, uh, our thinking, all that stuff. That's Blair's world. So we did 4D last week. And we did that during the IRL. We had some guest speakers uh, the first morning. Uh, three of them, it was all geared around construction, about due diligence, engineering. There was a lot of stuff there. It was fantastic. But I'm going to give people a chance to bring up questions or discuss their takeaways or whatever matters. And uh, it, I'm just telling you, my biggest takeaway was a confirmation and a continuation in the evolution of the next level of us coming together as professionals in our company and actually taking away knowledge of something in something we didn't know when it comes to dealing with our clients and each other. And I would say almost everybody raised their hand when I asked the question when it was over, are you getting ready to work on a deal with somebody you just met here? And I'm telling you, it was like the whole room raised their hands. If we had over 100 people come through, they weren't all in the room at this exact same time, but it was fantastic. So that's my takeaway. And I'm talking about the four-year celebration and the IRL we did in Atlanta last week, okay? I'd like to thank Eric Clark for co-hosting with me, uh, and I'm sure he's thinking that I co-hosted with him, but you can't do this by yourself. It takes a team. It takes a it takes a village. And what, what the best success is you people showing up. That makes all the difference in the world and speakers. So I'm going to stop talking about it right now. I see several people are, okay, Andrew, I'm going to pick on you first. This is your first time here. So I need you to introduce yourself to everybody. And this is being recorded, okay? So you just tell us who you are, where are you, what's going on in life, and then we'll go on from there. All right. Hi, guys. Um, I'm, well, I guess this is my first and in person meeting. And uh, coming for such event, you know, um, I never been to XPCon, but I went for the commercial. I like commercial more. Um, you can talk to people, relate to people. Uh, I am based in New York. 
Um, I have uh, another license in California, San Diego, where I'm spending some of my time. Um, well, in overall, I've been to a lot of different events, but um, I know I like it. You know, it would be nice to have another one similar and faster, not to wait a year. Okay. Is that good, Keith, or something else? I yeah, should so add. Are you are you at EXP Commercial now? Are you in EXP Realty now? What are you doing right now? In the commercial. Okay. So you're new to the commercial. Welcome aboard up there yeah. in New York. And you are one of several that came in from everywhere. And we thank you for you know investing in yourself and taking time out and joining us this past week. So congratulations. We had, I think Eric and I counted up 16 different states represented there. That was pretty, pretty great. All right. Anybody got any questions or Andrew real quick? True. You can you can do your own uh in real real life event like Keith did. Uh I'm planning on doing it with a couple other agents. So just you don't have to wait a year. You can put it on yourself. We're 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 doing one in March. Yeah. Yeah. I let me just recommend it's not a one person thing right now. So Andrew will need help, Eric. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he can he can connect with the other people in in New York. All right. Yep. That's great. Hey, Alan. Alan Wu. I see you on Saturdays, but is this your first time coming on my Monday one? Yes, sir. Keith. Yes. Uh, this is my first time. It's actually. All um, right. Well, welcome. A a Eric invited me here. So good to meet you. All right. Well, uh, tell everybody who you are, where are you? And, and you know, that's that. You know, just a quick intro and then we'll go on from there. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, good to meet everyone. Um, actually, um, I, I know. Um, uh, Mr. James Huang very well. Uh, he he's the guy that brought me onto uh, EXP. Uh, personally, I run a company called Sequoia Lending. Uh, what we do is that we fund uh, commercial. Um, we are commercial lend, uh, uh, brokers, so we fund a lot of commercial projects, uh, such as you know one to four unit inv uh, investment property, fix and flips, constructions, uh, all the way to multifamilies, retails, hotels, you name it. Anything that that is involved with uh, commercial, that's what we fund. So again. Um, Love this platform, and um, that's where I am. All right. Thank you, Alan, for coming today. Thank you. Anybody got any questions of Alan? Say it again. I'm sorry. I was going to see if anybody had a question, any questions for you. Well, also, I would like to thank uh, Eric. Um, Eric is which, the one that which Eric? invited which me Eric? to. Which oh, Eric? Eric. Um, um, Bashford? Bashford? Yep. Okay. All yeah, right. I actually met, I actually met uh, Eric in Delaware. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Nothing? Okay. So I'm going to go around the horn, let anybody wants to start. Uh, I just want to cover what you take away or what, what just was so fascinating for you this past week being in Atlanta. Uh, well, let's wait for Rich to come on. I want Rich here. Hang on. I tell you, I tell you, another one of my fantastic takeaways of this week in Atlanta was seeing Rich in 4D, as Blair says, right? So, Rich, we haven't started yet, but I've asked the question. Uh, let's talk about Atlanta real quick. A great uh, either takeaway or something you think that everybody in EXP commercial, people who are watching this recording later, should know because it was it happened there in Atlanta. It was brought up or it was somebody or something, okay? Or I don't know, or maybe your thought press started started. So whoever wants to speak first, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's like nine of us here that were there. So let's go. Let's just jump. Yeah, I'll jump in Paul. real quick. Paul, go. All right, Paul Zorich, Nashville, Tennessee. I was there. Uh, been to a lot of these in Birmingham and Atlanta. Had them in Nashville here. Uh, a couple of quick takeaways. I think it's a good group of and people. Um, I've been in EXP since uh, 2019. I have some that, uh, you know, can ruin a room. I mean, these are just good. Hey, Paul, what's going on with the internet? Is it, I mean, you're, you're cutting in and out. Okay, go to somebody else. I'll come back. Okay. Next. We got Max, got Tim, got Eric, got Rich, got Blair. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in here. Uh, you know, yeah, Keith, I, I, I had a great time. Uh, I met so many different agents. Um, so many advisors. people were advisors. I'm sorry, advisors. Uh, 
you know, everyone was really great, um, willing to, you know, uh, help out in any questions I had. Um, you know, the speakers were really great. Um, you know, I networked. I have a couple of meetings already set up uh, this week with a couple of different people. So, yeah, I mean, it, what a great event. Um, really glad I, you know, took the time, went out. Um, really excited, uh, you know, for for us to put one on here locally, just to kind of uh, do one for EXP. So, sounds great, Eric. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna embarrass you. Okay, you ready? I'm putting you on the spot. So, sure. one of the great speakers was Rich Enderling, who's on this call right now. Yes. Is there anything anything out of Rich's speech or or talk that he did with us that that you could take away that you remember? Well, Rich and I had a great talk afterwards, uh, and we we had talked about um, his buyers, uh, and we we networked a little bit about um, you know because he has uh, a lot of buyers in Florida, but we had talked maybe talking about um, having some buyers in, in Delaware, but um, you know his 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 speech really kind of motivated me as well. So, all right, so. For those who don't know that, Rich Rich did very good at telling the history of EXP commercial. So we appreciate what you did there, Rich. Anybody else want to jump in there at all? I'm going to call on you if you don't. Put in my two cents worth if you want. Go ahead, John. It gets repeated over and over again how important uh, the 3D or the 4D in real life is. And I uh, with regards to Blair, with regards to Rich, with regards to Eric uh, Bashford, and a few others, actually being able to stand in front of them, being able to read body language and impress upon them that you do have, you know, uh, the, the skills necessary to do the particular job that they may be interested in, and they have the skills that you're looking for, and uh, knowledge and mentorship as well, is epically more uh, important than and impactful than uh, webinars and Zooms and things like that. Not taking anything away from what you've built here, Keith, but if you're not making the effort and the energy to actually meet people and learn about them and ask them about themselves and about their business, you are missing out on a world of knowledge, skills, abilities, and opportunities. This uh, past week when we were in Atlanta, not only did I get to meet these people that I get to see only or mainly on Zoom, but I got to actually shake their hand, learn about them, and actually ask them questions that popped in the head and, and have a conversation. And that was a huge thing, a conversation. Also, uh, one of the epic things that happened to me is I found myself a, um, a clothing um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, someone to help me. And that is Max. If you want to know about Persian food or if you want to know about clothing, uh, you need to talk to Max. If you want to get the straight skinny, you're going to talk to Blair. And if you're looking for opportunities and things like that, talk to Rich. And I'm looking for an opportunity. When I think Eric was speaking to it is we have a meeting or we're trying to get a, the meeting set up this week for an opportunity with him and his partner. So as an outsider to realty, but working our way in, there's opportunities abounding for everyone. And with the new, with the shift in things and or the settling or the, the bucking of what's going on in the world, the opportunities are really starting to pop. So mm -hmm. take every opportunity you can to either participate in one of these events that Keith is involved in or EXP Commercial is, or if you're in the neighborhood with, you know, someone here on these calls or that, you know, they recommend to you in the neighborhood, go do it. Get in front of them, talk to them, shake their hand, and figure out how you guys can and gals can support each other. That's great event last week, Keith. Thanks, Chef. Thanks, Keith. Yo. I think what the takeaway that I got from the whole uh, meeting that we had out there was the caliber of the individuals that we had. Uh, we had almost like, you know, 40, 45% increase from the year before as far as numbers, but also we did not have any beginners, you know, that many. Uh, majority of the people that they were there were tenured brokers that they know what they're talking about and how to work the room and network with each other perfectly 
and everybody, if I'm not mistaken, almost everybody uh, end up going home with a transaction through the networking that they had with each other. And I think next year probably is going to be, you know, a lot more of that. And we're going to be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, increase the uh, uh, participant. And I was very impressed. One thing with you, I don't want to give you a pat in the back that much because you're going to go crazy. But Never. you really Never. are made for this son of a gun company. You know, you eat, drink, breathe, walk, talk, nothing but EXP commercial. And that's what kind of got everybody in that mood, if you will. Thank you. Thank you, Max. All right. So you mentioned Caliber. What about the leadership? Did you notice that we had our full of course. Of the XP of commercial course. now? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And from that, uh, another another item of interest that all of you need to uh, to know, and you can, and they're very proactive. You can reach out to any of them as well at any time and ask questions. Is the fact that we are we are evolving, uh, and we're going to start evolving exponentially where the growth of our company is going to be, you know, 1800 by the end of next year, it might be 24, maybe 3000 by the end of the following year. And we're talking about advisors inside EXP commercial. And most of them probably came, will probably have come from all the other major players out there who see our business model and they understand it. And they, they, they would love to be a part of that business model. And and also we'll have the tools that they're used to utilizing, so they'll be within the business model here as well. So you'll see that kind of growth. Um, you also see the growth of you know, one real distinguishing factor is our logo will be completely different. You will see a total separation of mindset as far as when somebody hears EXP like I do, they'll start asking, "Are you EXP?" residential realty or UEXP commercial they will start asking that question the rest of the rest of the world will because they realize they are two different brokerages and that's where that's where we're headed and they can see that in the most simplest thing is our current not our current but our new logos can't tell you what that is though have no idea but they will be different anybody i tell you what we got somebody here who He's going to be a mentee of mine. Um, he's still waiting on the state to give him his license, I guess. But Heath showed up. Heath invested in himself ahead of time and showed up. And so Heath, coming from that perspective of you don't know EX, you don't know commercial, you didn't know EXP commercial, you, you know what you pretty well could have gotten spoiled by being inside our culture as opposed to what the rest of us came from culture-wise. But go ahead, Heath. You got anything you want to add to the conversation? Sure. Thanks, Keith. Um, yeah, for me, like, um, being brand new to everything, um, I really, really enjoyed, uh, the trip down to Atlanta. Um, literally when I first got to the hotel, I got to go back and sit down with Keith and Rich and Tom and Eric, um, yeah, that was great. And then Max showed up too. And then Sean came and John was there too. So it was just like, I got to, being a brand new guy, got to rub elbows with these OGs and, uh, you know, so, some of the brass. So that was, uh, that was super cool. Um, you know, and I hope I did a good, good job of, uh, you know, imprinting or giving a good impre impression. So, um, yeah, I'm just really excited to be part of the team and, and, uh, you know, I feel like I made really good connections that, um, you know, by by this time next year, when, when we have year number five anniversary, you know, I'm sure I'll have done deals with with many of these people that I met in Atlanta. So looking forward Love to it. that. Love that thought process. Rich, your hey, mic is your mic. Can I ask you the question? Yeah. Did you get a haircut or you lost the uh, cowboy hat? I still have the cowboy hat. I just, uh, you know, didn't wear it today. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, Gosh. 
Rich, your your mic's open. Does that mean you wanted to talk, or you just? Waiting? Oh yeah, no, I was just waiting for everybody else. I, I was just oh, okay. Waiting for everybody else, but I had a, quite a few takeaways from it. Uh, first and foremost, the biggest by far, the biggest takeaway from the week was that we dispel all rumors that Chuck from Superstructures was ever a member of ZZ Top. We dispelled <laughs> that rumor. Yep. Yep. But uh, listen, I, I guess the, the one thing I can tell you is, um, I, you know, I traveled all day back on Friday, but Saturday I went into the office and I literally spent all day following up. I probably made about 25 contacts in Atlanta. Um, yeah, Eric was one of them. Uh, Heath, it was just great to meet you. And I'm, I'm, I'm in your corner, pal, whatever you need. Andrew, by the way, I need your contact info. I wasn't able to follow up with you because I, I can't find your, your email. So please uh, send that to me. Uh, getting the chance to meet in real person with, with Blair Gilbert was just uh, just 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 fantastic. It's so great. Um, I will also say that um, I, I did have kind of a, a, a second mission to go out there, and that was to figure out what what is our new leadership all about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm very 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 impressed. I, I think we've got a, you know there's a commitment that's been made by EXP to make EXP Commercial a standalone company. When, when our good friend Jim Wong stepped down, I was really worried that we were gonna fall under the thumbprint of EXP Realty and that concerned the hell out of me. Uh, but the fact that they hired Sean, that they hired John, they kept Lindy, they, they brought on uh, Kristen uh, and, and they just, they're building a great team. And, and I just love the fact that the, you mentioned the logo, Keith, there, there's this titles that, that they're doing, which is extremely important, which is going to keep our friends on the realty side at bay so that they don't go around saying, hey, I'm commercial when all they do, they, they've sold, you know, a few houses and, and, and maybe a duplex and they call themselves commercial. We can't have that. So I'm really impressed with leadership. Um, the event is everything, Keith, you, you build it out to be. And the second what Max said, you are tailor-made for it. You know, you, you just, you knew when to have people take a break. You knew when to, you read the room beautifully. Um, it was, uh, the, it moved extremely well. It went by fast. It was informative. It was a great, well-planned well program. And of course, the best part was the networking. I mean, we spent three nights in the bar. Uh, everybody was buying everybody else drinks. And we got a chance to meet with Sean personally, Lindy personally, John Latorno personally. And that's a big deal. I, I, I commend them for spending the time to just sit and talk with us. And, and it wasn't all business. It was a lot of it was business, but it was a lot of personal just to get to know them. And when you start to do that, you build a little bonding. And uh, Chuck knows that Rick and I had a save the world conversation, his partner. And, and it was a really great. I just really enjoyed getting to know them. And I've met so many people that, you know, again, the, the, the 2D doesn't work. 3D is the real thing. And, and I, I can't tell you uh, how great the event was for so many reasons. Well worth the expense, well worth the time, uh, well worth not getting any sleep for three days. It, it, it just 100% glad I went, Keith. Thanks for, for continuing to push me. And uh, I, I strongly recommend that you put on your calendar for next November to, to wherever uh, the fifth birthday celebration is, because I think it's going to be a lot bigger. I really think it's going to grow exponentially, and I think it's going to have create a lot of opportunities. I've got uh, two conference calls lined up with potential deals. I've got uh, some other folks, Eric and I are going to speak. Uh, it's This is what it's all about, and, and you can't do it on, on a Zoom. You can't do it on a phone call. you got to get out and start and meet and talk to people, and, and it was uh, just a, a great A event from top to bottom, Keith. Congrats. You did a great job. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rich. Uh, let me let me just uh, inter interrupt everybody real quick. So, yes, my goal since day one has always been uh, retention, like the rest of the company. If you bring people physically together in three or four D, it really helps people feel like they're part of something. And the culture we have at EXP Commercial is, it's like we're just one big family. I mean, mm -hmm. we're in fifty states, and we're still one big family. And you could see that when 16 states were in Atlanta last week, it's like we were all one big family. And that included, we had realty people in there as well. And it's like, we had icons in there from realty because this was a, a, a sanctioned event where they could get their icon points for their stock awards that they get. Okay, so they were there. We had four or five of them. I mean, but this, the, the default part of that that you don't realize is happening is... If you bring a guest, things change. Uh, we had that young guy, you know, he introduced himself. Hey, I'm with KW Commercial today, but tomorrow I'll be with EXP Commercial. You know, it's just like that. That's how he introduced himself, <laughs> you know. And and the four people that 
I have heavy influence on uh, that were there and they're in the process of getting their licenses. They're all dedicated. They're all they're they're done. They are going to join EXP Commercial. There's no doubts about it. The 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 guests that Eric Clark brought, every one of them, and and, and some of you met some of them. Uh, they're coming on board as well. They're they're yeah, one of them doesn't even have a license, but he's going to get his license because our business model is huge, and he's going to help us build in some other countries. Oh yeah, bring your guests. It's a great agent attraction venue. Never fails. Two things. People walk away knowing each other and getting ready to do deals or have already started while they were there. And agent attraction happens. It, it can be almost 100%. It literally can. So I'm just going to give you that. Okay, next. Sorry, just want to interject that. Go ahead. Keith, can I come back in? Can you hear me? Okay, always. Okay, so what you were just talking about, um, I didn't think about it till you said this, but you know, EXP is such a non-threatening environment. Um, meaning that when we go there and you got some heavy hitters that have been in this business uh, 10, 20, 30 years, I don't feel inferior to them. I know I respect them. I respect what they've done, but everybody wants to help each other. You know, I talked to Max a week or two ago about a gas station situation. He shared something with me that was important. Um, you know, everybody wants to help each other. Uh, I'm wondering from the guys or girls that have been at another large company, when you went to these sort of events where they would meet up, were people kind of, uh, you know, like ready to put their arm around you and, and share something with you? Or was it like, I got my deals, you got your deals, stay away from my people, <laughs> you know, with this company because of the model, it works for everybody to uh, collaborate. All right, Paul. So now I need to take you back to, to moment number one, you were, when you were telling us what your takeaways were or whatever, and we might be able to hear you clearly now. So if you want to start that piece over again, go for it. Okay, I told you there's good people out there. Everybody in that room was a, a good person and a, and a great advisor. Uh, EXP Commercial, the growth is incredible if you really look at it with an open mind. We are at the beginning of something that's just starting, even, even though we've been here for the past four years, some of us. Uh, bring a guest next time, like Keith just said. You bring a guest, you don't have to even say the word EXP. They'll just feel it and experience it. And uh, Eric and Keith did a great job in the non-threatening environment that everybody collaborates. And that's what I took away. All right. Thank you, Paul. So, Keith, there's one other thing I wanted to, to praise you on is the 15-minute break in between speakers. Um, that was the first event I've ever been to where we were able to uh, get out of our seat every 15, 20 minutes and actually just talk to people um it's been always been like uh okay you've got 20 minutes for lunch and if you need a br uh, break you know run to the bathroom or whatever where it was a slow pace we still got to hear a lot of great speakers but um we were also able to network and i think that was really what was key about this whole event yeah so pe pe people are listening to this recording right now here here's a heads up look if you plan an irl and you're gonna have speakers the purpose of the speakers is, is is an education piece for all of us coming together for a day. I mean, number one, we're coming together for retention and we're getting to know each other or whatever, but then have some education of something. And the only way it's effective, and Paul and I discovered this, we tried out in Nashville. We realized that Nashville is where we started it, is you'll have a speaker for 30 to 45 minutes. Take a break. That speaker and all those people sitting in that room, all of a sudden they're together up front. I mean... Don't have three speakers and take a break. Then the other, you know, everybody gets lost. So that's extremely critical you do that. Have your sponsor speak. Try to have them speak for two, three, you know, uh, whatever, 15, 20 minutes, uh, maybe up to 30 minutes total for two or three of them. And then take a break because it's just like they were a speaker. People want to go talk to them, right? So just keep that in mind when you do that. So thank you, Eric, for for. I don't know who thought of it. I think Paul and I thought of it together, or maybe Paul thought, I can't, I don't know, but one of us did it in one of these IRLs. <laughs> hey, hey, Keith, one other thing on that note, uh, when Eric uh, Bashford up there in the uh, Northeast is going to do this, or other people are thinking about doing it, as Keith said, we've developed this over the past three years. We have a Word document saved as a PDF on how to put on a IRL. And these things have been tried and tested. You can do things your own way, but the outline and the flow of the day has been tried and tested. I know we've done 
I think four of them here in Nashville over the past couple of years. Uh, Birmingham has done them. Atlanta has done them. So reach out to Keith or I will share that document with you before you get too far down the road. Yeah, we're actually going to, uh, I'm working on, uh, as Chuck and I determined, we're calling it a SOG, Standard Operating Guidelines, as opposed mm -hmm. to Standard Operating Procedures. I'm taking the outline that Paul started, I kind of added to it, we kind of tweaked it. We take that outline and actually do the SOG for what we just did last week. But I'm telling you guys, this takes a few minutes. This takes a little while. I did not do any of this work on the weekend like Rich did. I took a break. I'm sorry. <laughs> actually, I was tired. Actually, I was Rich's assistant all Saturday because all day and evening, he's asking me, give me the contact info of this person, this person. I constantly was giving the contact information. I was amazed that I had everybody in my phone. I thought that was fantastic that I, did, that I had that, Rich. But uh, it's it's critical. You need to build, and that is my CRM. My phone is my CRM. Everybody's in my phone. They're in lists. They're segregated. I'm getting off track. Sorry, let me go back. So, yes, thank thank you, Eric. Thank you, Paul. Anybody else want to add to this? It's Blair's turn. His, his microphone's off. Oh, first of all, let me say something about Blair, okay? He doesn't smile a lot, does he? <laughs> you got to make him smile on these Zooms. But in person, you won't believe he's as tall as I am, and he smiles in person. So go ahead, Blair. <laughs> I think we would all be remiss if we didn't get a tremendous amount of credit to Tom. And Keith, help me pronounce his last name because I stumble on it. But Strong. Um, Strong. Here is, here is a guy that is... Five foot seven, but stands 18 feet tall in the presence of anybody and everybody is not with the XP commercial, but you can't tell it by talking to him. He is so committed to helping commercial grow. It's absolutely unbelievable. He's amazing. He's, I can't say enough about him. I'm just I'm just blown away with his commitment to EXP period. And he he said to here's my cell phone. If everybody, if you want me, call me. And somebody of his stature, of his accomplishments, to do that, they they just don't exist in the in any place else in the world. They don't exist. He, Thank you. Thank we you, need Blair. to give him a, 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 a. Tom is actually uh, my upline. He's the one that brought Jim Wong into the company. Yeah. And then Jim has brought all of us, a lot of us. So yeah, he's a he's a Tom. Tom is a go getter, and he's actually is joining the XP commercial here in the near future. Uh, he's making the jump over now because of everything that's going on. He wants to be a part of the bottom growth. I mean, we are at the very bottom. And getting ready to exponentially take off. And what's really interesting, if you haven't seen the chat, and I'm saying this in the recording, Chad just put something in the chat, which I think is fantastic. I don't know if you guys saw that. Chad, how was this measured or who says this, that we are now sixth place in terms of transactions volumes nationally compared to all the all the, the companies? Hey. Sorry, yeah. So like right before you guys, I had my last AAC meeting of the year, and that's what Sean told us. Uh, I haven't verified it yet, but I mean, why would he lie? So, uh, well, he would. I mean, that's yeah, fantastic. So, yeah, um, I just don't know what the source is. Uh, also, just real quick from the AC, I can't talk a lot of details, but uh, CoStar is at the uh, one inch line. Uh, it is now imminent. Um, I can't give you much more info than that. You get Canva on the sixth, and supposedly there's a new a, a new set of logos already made. Uh, they said they sent them out to all the AAC. I didn't get them yet to like review and give my input, but supposedly there's already some iterations made and they're they're reworking on the feedback. So I, everything is very much in motion that you're talking about. Okay. And uh, you also said he has to now give it due group structure. What what do you what do we say in there, Chad? I didn't understand that. Sure. So under the group structure right now, if you're running a hybrid team, um, the team commander uh, has to be commercial. So uh, whoever whoever the top of the team is, they have to be on the commercial side. If you read the document, um, that that's probably why he has to uh, go over and get uh, you know a commercial 
uh, not a license, you know what I mean? Like a membership or whatever. Um, because the top of the team has to be on the commercial side when you run both together. All right, Rich, I got to ask a question. Did you read the chat there? It says this includes people like Eminem and Cushion Wakefield and NAI and all that. We we are now sixth. What? How does that hit you? You know, coming from Eminem. Yeah, well, you know, I, I Blair just sent me an article over the weekend that uh, Eminem just turned a profit for the first time in two years. I saw yep. that. Yeah. So, so I'm not surprised, actually. And, and uh, it just it was, first of all, volume has been down dramatically. I mean, 2023 and 2024 will go down as the lowest transactional volume years since 2008, 2009. It's just been really slow. Now, 2021, 2022, even with the pandemic, uh, commercial real estate was booming. A lot of deals got done those two years. But 23 and 24 were dead as a doornail. I mean, 11 consecutive interest rates just absolutely paralyzed our industry. So it's not terribly surprising, Keith, actually, that, that uh, we're sixth. Uh, but it, yeah. it's great. It's great. And, and think about it. I mean, our growth is, you know, the rest of this industry is sliding. I mean, there are far fewer brokers today than there were 20 years ago. Uh, you, you just the number of brokers has dropped precipitously. And EXP's growth is exponential. It's going up. It's straight up. It's a hockey stick. It's just going straight up. So it's only a matter of time, really, before we catch, you know, all the rest of them, especially the younger generation when they realize, what in the hell am I going to give away 50% of my check for when EXP has everything Marcus and Miller Chapter CB has? Uh, so, yeah, I just want to add on to that, Rich. Um, so I went with Brent to the Massimo group. Um, they had their big coaching where they bring on everything. And the big topic was on information and data. Um, and speaking to this transaction volume nationally here, what are we doing to actually put out reports and things that would make EXP seem a little more legitimate in the um, commercial brokerage space? Does anybody know? I know there was a movement to do that. We had hired somebody from CCIM, but that would be my question. You guys might have talked about it before, but I don't know. Yeah, Brian, I'll just say this. This goes to the, the leadership and what they showed up. And by the way, Chad, I think you can talk about anything now because they announced all everything about uh, CoStar uh, at the uh, Atlanta event. So I, I don't think there's – but if you don't feel comfortable, that's fine. Um, Let's go. I, Out yeah, with it. But, but, Brian, to your point, one of the things that you have to look at is EXP is definitely making a commitment to making EXP commercial standalone. I mean, the hiring of, of John and Sean and the team is one thing. Secondly, this whole branding is going to be amazing. I don't know what it is going to look like either, but I don't care. They're just trying to separate us because, as you know, you know, when we're attached to it, you know, 85,000 residential agents, all the commercial groups are going to poo-poo us and say, ah, oh, you're all resi commercials. And, and that's, a, that's just a thing that we're going to have to rise above and figure it out. But I think that this approach that they're taking is really smart, is really going to separate EXP commercial as a standalone entity, as opposed to just being, you know, the little brother of, of EXP Realty. So I, I'm really happy about it. The, the data that's available today is incredible compared to what it was. That's why I'm saying that, that, that the CBs and the Marcuses of the world, they just, they don't offer that value proposition that EXP does. And it, it, it's it's the same across the board. It's very generic at this point. And that's why I think they're going to continue to lose ground and we're going to continue to gain ground because there's no better platform on the planet than, than what EXP has. I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, and I also had somebody call me from Toronto before the event saying they were like a residential agent trying to um, uh, convert a brokerage at Massimo um, but they were like, oh, we're almost there. And I didn't know they did residential. So it's interesting that residential is trying to um, <laughs> somehow get brokerage teams over to EXP. Maybe that they're using that as a business for them, but I just thought it was weird because I would never be, don't know a brokerage that would be convinced by someone that's on the residential side to come to EXP commercial. But I guess they said that they thought they were close. Sorry, so. Keith, for jumping in like this, but it's just so important. And, and Brian, to your point, um, EXP is absolutely, uh, we mentioned that they're changing these titles and giving you titles based on your experience and based on your production level. What that's going to do is that's going to curb all these residential folks to who sit there and say, oh, I'm commercial, I'm commercial. No, 
If you, if you want to be a commercial, you join EXP commercial. Enough of this nonsense that you're on residential and you're claiming to be commercial. That's just, that hurts, that hurts our company, that hurts our industry, and it hurts the individual. They're not doing justice to their clients by that. And really, sorry, I'm, I'm very passionate about this because it's a battle I've had for all my years when I was on the, on the C-suite and in the corporate side of things. We can't have that. We can't have residential people saying, oh, I'm a commercial guy. It just drives me nuts. And, and I'm so glad that they're taking a very aggressive approach by limiting what they're going to be able to do. And, and this the, the whole teams thing, the whole, you know, you want to do commercial, they're going to really limit the residential people from doing it if they do not have the qualifications and most of them don't. So I'm really happy about that. I, I love the direction that we're going in. Sorry, last, last thing. Is there a, a report that's out from somebody from you guys from your meeting or something about the latest updates or we just go to EXP commercial and can read it somewhere? I, I, I don't know of any report, Brian, other than everything they do, they put in EXP commercial certified advisors. I will say one thing since we're on the topic real quick. Uh, to anybody who hears this recording, if you're an EXP commercial and you have not done your new title application you have to get that done get it done today get it done tomorrow get it done and then make the change and those of you who have done it get in there and change your email signatures and change your linkedin and change whatever else and get that new title on there okay so i'm just telling you that right now it's very critical as far as pr brian uh wendy foresight the cmo of all of exp is all about commercial. And so uh, you can ask Sean that, uh, Chad, if you'd like, if uh, if Wendy's got hold of all this and, and they're putting it out or what. So uh, that, that, that's probably our, that's probably our uh, avenue of uh, PRs through Wendy's crowd. Quick question, Kit. Uh, where can I get that title application? Where is it? Oh, we it can. would be in one of three or four emails you got over the last two weeks. Okay. Well, and it, it. it would, or you can go to exp commercial. You can actually just go to concierge at expcommercial.com on email and say, send me the application for my title, or go into exp world to the commercial auditorium and say, send me my application for my title. I'll do that. Thank you. You got to stay on top of these emails, man. They, they keep jumping at us constantly. They were happening all last week while we were there, too. So that was fun in Atlanta. So, Thank you. Anybody else on any of these topics? We're at uh, quarter till. This is when I usually turn off the recording uh, because we've told everybody what we want them to know. Uh, let me tell you what I need you to know. So you need to put March 6th and March 7th on your calendar if you want to join us in either New Jersey or Pennsylvania, wherever this IRL that Eric, that a Delaware guy, a New Jersey guy, and a Pennsylvania guy are putting together. March 6th and 7th. Uh, I noticed, notice I said the 6th because, man, you have got to plan on people to get there the day before. And like Rich said, the most critical time of networking is at the bar or not inside the meetings. It's it's it maybe it doesn't have to be at the bar, it could be at the lobby or whatever, or at the pool or whatever. Okay. But it's winter time up there. It's probably gonna be closer to a bar <laughs> inside the hotel. So make sure you get that account. Yeah. I am looking at EXP Commercial Certified Advisors. Okay. There is a post there that talks about the new advisory directory and profiles. Okay. So make sure you go to that as well, because I, I went to that to check my, my profile, and it's all up to date. We're good for me. But for us, you guys click that same link, Chad. Yeah, so for those of you that haven't done that, that's very important because if you go to EXP Commercial's website and you click the find an agent option, it pulls the profile that you have from build out. Um, we are going away from that in terms of, I'm not saying necessarily build out per se, we are going away from that as you in terms of using that uh, as an agent directory. And the reason why is it prevents people from, the, the people that want to go use Relinex, it prevents them from doing that, uh, or it doesn't prevent them, but... Uh, if they go to Realnex and use their tools, they get delisted uh, because they don't choose build out. So we're making that part, uh, I guess, vendor agnostic. The directory will be completely independent of Realnex or build out. That's why this is happening. Chad, I'm sorry, that's really huge. And, and I appreciate that because I'm on Realnex and it's ridiculous that for four years I'm not listed anywhere. 
just ridiculous. So it, it's yeah, just and, and look, I agree. I got ticked off when I wanted to explore real next and like experiment with it. And I guess I didn't read the fine print about you will lose access to build out. And I'm like, but I'm on, I mean, and look, and not that I've ever gotten a lead off of the EXP commercial website, but still you're just like, I, I don't like not being listed. Right. So uh, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. So Aaron in this chat right now, Chad put in those links as well. Just go into chat here on this call. You'll see him. Anybody else? I'm going to turn off recording unless you want everybody to know what's going on. Anybody. Okay. I'll say it one more time. We're not doing this next Monday. It's Thanksgiving week. I myself is starting my Thanksgiving week Monday morning. I'm getting on a train. So since I'm the host, I won't be doing this. Is that okay? Okay. The following Monday, come on back for about three weeks. And then we got the Christmas time happening, people. So uh, I can do this again that last Monday of December, which is kind of crazy because most people will be on vacation then. I tell you what, we'll just do it. We'll just wait till January after the first three weeks of December. We won't start up again till January. It will be a new link. I will go into Zoom and I will create a new Zoom link. So you will not be able to join this unless you save that invitation in the future. All right. I'm going to turn off recording if nobody else has anybody Anything you want the rest of the world to know? Anybody? All right, here we go. Where's the recording stuff? Oh, there it is. Always looking the wrong spot. You know that.